from a child's perspective, it's very hard to look at your, your parent who used to be full of knowledge and have all the answers and be the strength, all of a sudden fade into you taking them to the bathroom and you know you telling them it's okay when they're overwhelmed. You trying to uh, help them make sense of the world because it doesn't make sense anymore. The other thing is just trying to remember that the, that the person isn't doing anything on purpose, that you might be frustrated with them, but they're actually really trying and they just can't do it anymore. Try to be kind to yourself. Understand you're gonna get frustrated, you're gonna get disappointed, you're gonna feel sad and hurt and loss and grief all the way through it. But, you know, there's always hidden gifts I found through this process that he has arrived so completely emotionally for us. From never taking our hands as little kids to holding our hands all the time, from never being able to tell us he loves us to telling us he loves us, you know, many, many times every time we're out and needing kisses and needing hugs. And, and so that gift of really being able to get to that person and feel like you have a connection. We knew we had to adapt, we accept, I think we both accepted it. We didn't stop doing what we had been doing, we still socialized, we told everybody, we, did, we didn't back off our friends and, and of course our family. The guilt is ongoing. When I leave Rita at the moment, every day I visit Rita, and I have a guilt problem every time I leave her, and I guess that's normal. I don't think there's anything I can do about it, I must just accept where we are. There's a grief substance there, but also there's a lot of other things going on. Loneliness for me is one of them, and I'd never, I'd never had this before. So that is part of the grief and par, part of the missing reader at home. When we first moved into this house, he was, he was fine. And then um, just after, a, a few months after we'd been here, one of my neighbors couldn't understand why Mel was slighting him. He wasn't even speaking to him anymore. And I never mentioned to them that he had dementia. I, I just carried on with my life um, because my world was getting smaller too and it all evolved around him. In hindsight, I wish that I had told them all that he had dementia because there's no shame in it. There's just life and that's the way it is and so many people have this, this disease and you've just got to get on with it and I think the more people know that they can relate to the people a lot more. And the few people I did tell, if they happened to see him and I walking, we would walk for maybe a block or two at that stage and they would go, oh hello Mel, how are you doing? How are things today? Keeping it very simplified. Oh fine, fine, fine. And then we walk away. He said, who the hell was that? It changed my life, it taught me a lot, and was very difficult. My husband had vascular dementia, and when he was told that by the doctor, he immediately said to me, well, you'll look after me, sweetheart, I know you will. That was his response. For me, it was learning what to do, where do I go, scary. It was very scary. It's hard to see the man that you've been with for over 50 years be taken away from you, not in death, but be taken away from your care and handed over to somebody else. That's the struggle I have right now and I try not to dwell on it too much. I try and only think of today and tomorrow. What next, next week brings, I don't know. What next month brings, I don't know. So I try and again pull it all together. Don't think too far in advance and just concentrate on the now. He's happy. There is no doubt that um, there are stresses involved that come and go um, with uh, caring for somebody like my mom. Uh, 
and I really advise people to look after themselves as best they can. And so as a caregiver, what are the things that give you joy in life? One of the main focuses for me, one of the main meditative activities is my music. Another recent great joy that I had with mom was a walk through the park. She seemed to be looking at all the beautiful flowers and trees in that park, almost as though it was the first time she'd seen them. N not just those particular ones, but as though it was the first time she'd seen such beauty. And she was just taking deep breaths and moving her arms out like the ballet dancer she is. And what I experienced was a feeling as though I was seeing this through her eyes. And that's that intimacy of connection.